Welcome back to True Tech Troubleshooting Tutorials. I have a question from a subscriber today that was interesting enough. I thought maybe it would be helpful to everybody else to see it. This user has a need for some repeatable objects, some repeatable rows in his form, but he wants them to repeat in random order. In other words, he has three different types of rows. And of course, in his case, it was um, rows that contain a certain number of photographs. So he has a row that has one photograph in it, or another row with two photographs, and another row with three photographs. And he wants the end user to be able to randomly, at their own discretion, add the three row, or the two row, or the one row uh, intermittently throughout the form, as many times as they want, and as often as they want. And you notice that when you, when you set up in a certain way, at least the way that seems natural, and you add objects, those objects repeat right after each other. And so I'll just give you a little demonstration of that with a repeatable row here. If we have an expanding table and we click an add button like this here, it adds a clone of the row that we're adding to. And if you were to go in then and create a second type of row, say here, this is the table we're adding to. Let's insert a row below it and make this row a merged row. So these cells are merged. And we'll change what they are to say a text field and a numeric field and just put some objects in here. All right, and you wanted this row to repeat, and so we'll create a button here to make this row repeat. We'll call it a, a minus button. Oops. And so let's make another button in our header. We'll create another header row. Just to, how, just to house the button to do this. And then we script this. In the click event, we script this thing so that it'll add row two. So, similarly to this script, in this plus sign, we'll just add row two, add an instance of row two. All right, so we have our scripts there. And we'll go ahead and put the remove script to. So we'll copy that and paste that script into here. Change this to row two. All right, so what we have is we have row one and row two. I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this so it works. We have row one and row two. They're both repeatable. And we have buttons to make them repeat. And so... If we click the first button, the row with four cells in it repeats. And we click the second button, the row with two cells uh, repeats. But we can never get, the, no matter how often we click this, we can never get them to intermix. In other words, they're always going to be joined together and cloning together. And as you add the first row, it's just pushing all the grouping of the second rows together. And that's not what my subscriber was asking. He wanted... Maybe, for instance, a row of four, and then a row of two, and then another row of four, or maybe three or four of those in a row, and then another couple of rows of two. He wanted them intermixed. And doing it the way I've shown in the past doesn't allow for something like that. It only allows for repeating objects to repeat it together in mass. Why is that, first of all? Well, because what we're doing is we're cloning these rows using a script in XML. And so if you look at the XML of this row right here, all it is is just an a, uh, in, encapsulated tag called subform right here, all this code right here, or all this XML data right here. And when you click the plus button, it's just creating another section of this right underneath here. And it's just adding that in in real time. 
And there's no way for the computer to know or there's no way for the form to know based on these little scripts that you want to insert that instance in between other instances. And even if you did want to, it wouldn't work because, it, again, it's just cloning it. And so the question that my subscriber is asking is an important question. How do I get them to intermix if I want that? Well, natively, there's no way to do it. The lifecycle didn't create um, the XML insertion in that way. And so we have to get creative to figure out a way to make this work. And so what I've done here in this example is I've created a, a table with two rows, a header, and a row one object. And the row one object inside of it has a cell that is a subform. And in that subform is nested another table. And right now, that table is hidden. I'm going to go ahead and unhide it so you can see it. And so here's my table one. It has a header, which is this instruction set right here. It's just a header with some, some text in it. And then it has a row, and that row encapsulates everything you see here in the braces. That row has one cell, cell one. Everything you see here, which is a subform, you can ignore that warning. It just has to do with, I don't have flowed. My main page is not flowed at this time. And inside that subform, I nested, or I placed within it, another table. And that table is a three-row table with no header. Row one is just a singular item with one cell. And in that cell, it's just typed out the text photo row one. Again, I'm just making an example for my subscriber. Uh, in his case, he would have to add multiple cells with however many photo uh, image, image objects he wanted uh, or whatnot. And this could, this could be done in many different ways. But um, the way this repeats has to be done the way I'm doing it here. Row two, same thing. Row three, same thing. And so what I'm doing is I'm... I'm just hiding all three of those rows. And you'll understand why in a minute. Okay, then over here, I created a set of three buttons. And now the buttons each have um, a title in them or a caption in them that indicates if you press it, this is the kind of row that's going to be added. But that's really kind of hiding the magic underneath the script. So the end user will when they run the form and actually click the buttons, no matter what order they click them in, the order that they will appear is the order they clicked. And so I clicked photo row one button first, and that's what I got. I clicked two second, then three third, then I clicked three again, and I got those together. And of course, in our first example, that wasn't working that way. It was just adding them in tandem to each other, never in random order like I clicked. Okay, so how did I do this? Well, actually what's happening, each time I click any of the buttons, all three rows are being added. But remember, by default, they're all hidden. And so what I'm doing is, if, if this one is clicked, I'm just unhiding one of those rows. I'm unhiding row one. I'm unhiding row two. If I click this one, I'm unhiding row three. And you can see that in the script here. So, photo row one button is clicked. First thing that happens is I want to add an instance of this object right here. I'm adding an instance of the original tables, row one. All right, ignore the bottom two lines of code for now. Every button has that same line of code in it. That's the first thing that happens. I didn't put a space there. The same thing happens. The first thing that happens is row one is repeated. So all that's happening is row one is repeating. And like in the original example, you can't really organize that. Row one is row one, and everything in it is coming along with it, and it's repeating in tandem with each other. But the effect is different because I have everything hidden. I have all these three objects hidden, and so then the rest of the code in each is just identifying which row we're actually dealing with. That's what this row num variable is doing. And then I'm going in and resolving whatever row that is. So this is the fourth time any button has been clicked this row num becomes number four. And then I'm taking cell one, the, the, the nested table, table photo rows, row one, which is the one I've clicked. I've clicked row one, and I'm making, and I'm making that one visible. 
in photo row two, same thing except row two is becoming visible. In photo row three, same thing except row three is becoming visible. And so the net effect is it looks like I'm able to add in any random, random order. But that's really not what's happening. What's really happening is all three rows are getting added every time and only one is being unhidden. And so we're working around the limitation of XML, the limitation of lifecycle, by using some interesting code and a little bit of trickery, a little bit of uh, hiding and showing to make things happen. So I hope that helps my subscriber who asked the question and any of you who might have this issue come up, being able to randomly add rows. And of course, there'll have to be other videos where I explain all this resolve node stuff. That's going to be in my 301 class that I'm about to produce and put up on the channel. Um, Lifecycle AEM 301. We're going to talk about more advanced scripting, which this falls underneath that advanced scripting. Being able to use things like resolve node to find the random or the to find the correct object in a unknown, previously unknown set of repeated objects that you're wanting to work with. That's that's a more advanced topic in JavaScript. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time.